we have a big conversation to have about the astrology coming at us at the end of August 2023. Three big things that I'd love to go into with you in this conversation are Mercury retrograde starting on August 23rd. Next thing I'd love to go into is this full super moon on the 30th which has some very interesting aspects to it. And the third thing that I wanna go into is Virgo season. So sun moves into Virgo on the 23rd. That's the same day that Mercury goes retrograde in Virgo. So there's just a lot of Virgo energy and I wanna talk about that and give you some really good feels. For me, the aim of this conversation is, I like I know I say this in every video, but it's like, like a life cheat sheet, right? So I'd love, to invite you to treat it that way where there's just a whole plethora of things for you to feel into, practices, full moon ritual ideas, mercury retrograde, um, kind of reflective questions. Retrogrades are very reflective. Uh, so we'll talk about that and really uh, how you can go with the astrological tides, right? How you can kind of get in that slipstream and really get the most out of it. So if I were to give you an overall theme for this whole kind of end of August, start to September astrological storm, we'll call it, um, feels that I would give you if I were to mix all of these things together would be hmm, uh, a reassessment of your service in the world. Right? What is it that you're called to do in the world and to reimagine, reassess, uh, to kind of take inventory of that? That's very much Virgo season. It's very much retrogrades where it's, and we're going to revise things. So think your calling, your service, your kind of purpose, your, your meaning, what it is that you do in the world. And it doesn't have to be job. So don't think career or job. It can be, I'm actually like really my greatest service is loving my family, right? Bringing nourishment to my family, right? Bringing, creating spaces of growth for my children. So don't get stuck in career stuff when it comes to Virgo. Uh, and this overall theme of what's kind of going on. Uh, next thing for themes, again, this is just overall things for you to feel into. And again, feel into what's bubbling up for you. This is just a way of bringing things into the spotlight, illuminating, shining a light on things that might already be kind of happening, but now it's like we can see them even more. And that's very much full moon energy is things are illuminated. So let things be illuminated. Let yourself kind of hold this. And also with so many planets retrograde and Mercury, the mind now going retrograde, we get to see things we may have not seen. Think about things in a different way. Uh, okay, so other themes around this health. Um, really a focus on self-care. So self-care outside of just physical self-care. We want to think about our psycho-spiritual self-care. We want to think about our mental self-care. We want to think about our emotional self-care. So bigger, broader perspective on self-care and maybe reassessing and reevaluating what are the daily rituals, what are the daily routines that really support ourselves. Can also be a really good time for doing a detox, doing a cleanse. Virgo is so good at purification. Um, so this whole period of time, kind of end of August into September, really, really good for um, like up leveling our self-care practices, our meditation practices. There's a lot of spirituality coming into this one. So a full moon in Pisces, full super moon in Pisces, that's bringing in a lot of, of spiritual energy. Neptune's doing a couple of things, which are also bringing that in. Uranus is going retrograde. Uh, I wanna get you the date on this exact so that I'm not giving you crazy dates. Um, retrograde on the 28th, 29th, depending on where you're at. So just before this full moon happens, but Uranus has been a big player this whole month. And so really feeling into Uranian energy, when a planet is stationing, they're more powerful because they're not moving. They're just like intensified. So Uranus will definitely be flavoring the end of this month, this full moon. Um, Uranus energy is 
<laughs> rebellious energy. It's kundalini awakening. It's the nervous system. It's like the wiring in your system. Uh, so we can kind of feel into that. It's like radical, revolutionary, unexpected changes. Uh, things that coming at us out of left field can also be Uranian. Um, a lot of times for our waking up. So another aspect of that spiritual component, but it's more like lightning bolt waking up, like a kundalini awakening, right? That's Uranus. Uranus is kundalini energy. Um, or a way to link into kundalini energy. Kundalini is much more than Uranus. Let's not <laughs> get that wrong. Um, but uh, that aspect of spirituality is really illuminated during this full moon and this end of the month. All right, let's kind of go from this like overall themes and feel and vibe of this moment in time and let's dial into Mercury retrograde. I want to give you some really good stuff around this Mercury retrograde because we can get a lot out of it. Um, we can make a lot of changes, a lot of transformation can happen, and we can get a lot of insights. So that's what I love about Mercury retrogrades. It's the mind. And the mind, messenger of the gods, that's Hermes, that's Mercury, right? Messenger of the gods is literally going into your underworld, right? Your underworld, your subconscious, your unconscious, places that you haven't seen before. So he's taking a journey into your, so your mind is literally rewiring itself to go inward and it will be able to see things it didn't see before. It's beautiful, right? And I don't know why we've only done surface level of Mercury retrograde. Let me talk about this surface level where it's like communication gets messed up. Don't sign contracts. Don't travel. Da 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 da. Bah! Right? Mercury is also a trickster. So what Mercury is always wanting to do during a retrograde is hey, I I'd like to revise this. Here's something you missed. Here's a better way of doing this. Here's what I want to show you, right? To bring you into alignment with soul path, right? It's just bringing you into alignment with your evolution. It's stunning. It's beautiful. It's a gift from the gods, right? He takes his journey on a pretty regular basis and he's like, hey, just want to show you what you're missing out on, right? Like you've been go, 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 go but you've missed these little details that will refine things for you, that will bring you into a little bit of a deeper alignment, that will clarify things for you. So if a lot of times we can stay open, not locked in, I think if there was something that I can share about this moment in time, like here, tip number one, big, big, big tip, overall tip around this moment in time is to not be rigid to not be hooked on to plans we thought we had or the way we thought it was, to not be, to be more flexible, right? If we can be more flexible, then the trickster doesn't come out, right? Because we're open, so we have like open mind, we're open to seeing it differently, to more truths being revealed around our lives, around what is true for us, what we're called to, right? Um, how we can better take care of ourselves, Virgo, our service, again, what we're called to, because this is Mercury retrograde in Virgo. So it's in the sign of Virgo, the entire retrograde, which the retrograde goes from August 23rd um, at 20, I wanna get these right for you, 21 degrees Virgo all the way back to eight degrees Virgo on September 14th, 15th, depending on where you're at. And then we'll go back through that from eight degrees back to 21 between September 14th to September 30th. Right, so those are our Mercury retrograde dates. That whole time is a time of, all right, I'm gonna take you in to Virgo health, um, service to the world, daily routines. I'm going to take you inward to that, to revise, to review, to revisit, to reflect on things. And so if we can be open to that area of our life, right? And we can just be, okay, cool. My, my daily routine might need to change here. Okay. My health needs have maybe changed since the last time I sort of set up my diet, right? Like maybe your diet has been wanting to change and you've known it. Hands up, I'm calling you out if you're feeling this. You're like, you know what, I, I've actually had this feeling that I should eat more fresh foods. I should eat more raw. I should eat more vegetable. I should eat more food that has more aliveness to it. I'm just giving you an example. But you're called to change your diet, 
but you haven't quite done it yet. Now is a time when Hermes will get louder. That's how it works, it gets louder. So spiritually, so think about this also in Virgo and because all these different spiritual aspects that we've got going on is it's gonna be a time to look at your service to the world. Is there something you've missed? Is there a refinement? Are there different uh, daily routines, daily habits? Um, different ways of looking at things, right? Virgo is a lot about, um, there's a better way to do this. There's a better way to do this, let me show you. There's a better way to do, so if we can just be open to, there's a better way to take care of myself, there's a better way to uh, embody my calling, to express my calling, to um, be bringing my light into the world. So if you think about Leo season, it's always like what follows it kind of helps <laughs> to offset what Leo, what the season before was. So Leo season, right? It's all about finding your light, unique light, your creativity, like who are you uniquely, right? Your courage to shine out in the world. Virgo wants you to ground it, right? So now this is kind of talking about Virgo season a little bit. I know we're still in this Mercury retrograde, but it weaves right into Virgo season because Mercury retrograde is in Virgo. So it's really, really loud and Mercury gets louder during a retrograde. So just know um, it's an inner world journey to revise, to review, to revisit Virgo. If you don't know the house that Mercury is retrograding through for you, that may be worth looking at. So you just wanna run your astrology chart, look at where 21 to eight degrees of Virgo is in your chart. What is Hermes going over? Which house is he in and is he crossing over any planets? Like for me, Mercury goes over my north node, goes over my Saturn. Right? This is such a glorious time. It's a huge time. So if you have personal planets between 8 and 21 of Virgo, it's going to be a big retrograde for you. And you just make space for it. You just know like, ooh, I'm going to see a lot. There's going to be a lot of revising of my current plans. There's going to be um, a lot of reflecting on things. There's going to be a lot of reimagining things. And so giving ourselves that space. If you don't know how to run your chart, we have a free masterclass on it. How to run your chart for free and how to look at exactly where Mercury is retrograding. Which house it's in will also tell you the area of life. And all of that's in the masterclass. So there's a link below. It's like I think it's 90 minutes or something, but you could like speed through and skip to the parts that you need to if you want to, right? It's just sign up below, it's an email, and then we can send you the masterclass. And I'm sorry, but you'll be stuck with me. <laughs> it's me that did the masterclass. Um, and it was just a way to support our community so that y'all can get the most out of your own personal birth charts um, with these different transits that I talk about. Okay, I think that's good for Mercury retrograde. We'll park that. And then I want to talk, let's just weave into a little bit more around Virgo. So Virgo gets a bad rap. So this is Virgo season. We've got Mercury retrograde in Virgo. We've got the sun in Virgo. We also have Mars in Virgo. So Virgo's bad rap that people will say is Virgo's a perfectionist, right? It's never good enough for Virgo. Virgo's so nitpicky. They see all the details that no one else sees. Okay, but look at the glorious gifts of that. Right. If we're just going to stay on this level, there's another level to Virgo and we're going there in a minute. It's the Earth Priestess. It's stunning. It's stunning. It's embodiment. Right. It's glorious. And we'll get there in a second. But let's just stay here on this um, <laughs> more mundane level of Virgo. But if we spin that around and we go, OK, if I were to really lean into Virgo and not have this like judgment critical eye, which critical is such a good word for Virgo. Um, if I wasn't so critical of critical Virgo, I would lean into it and I would allow myself to really see the details because for Virgo, the details matter, right? The details, like what I put in my body matters. That's what Virgo is saying. Like, the time of day that I take a walk matters. How much sunlight I get in a day matters, right? Virgo is letting us know all of these little choices that we make really affect our health. They affect our mental health. They affect our emotional state. They affect 
um, how <laughs> available we are for those who we love in our lives. They affect the amount of energy that we have, the amount of life force running through us for what it is that we're called to serve. Virgo's really good at shoring up the energy leaks. Virgo is such a beautiful, um, um, like energy conservationist, right? Where Virgo is like, okay, and we want to shore up this leak and shore up this leak and shore up this and here we could tweak this a little bit and all of these little tweaks bring us much more life energy, much more aliveness, much more joy, much more happiness, much more alignment with our purpose. That's Virgo, right? That's stunning. And with the Mercury retrograde in Virgo, it's so, so good. Um, so I hope, um, that this is giving you some ways to kind of feel into it. I just shared this in our Bones membership, which if you're interested in journeying into these energetics, like some of you will send messages like, hey, how do I practice with this, Sabrina? What are the embodiment practices you do with the archetype of Hermes or with the Virgo and Earth priestess? That's what we do in Bones. That's what we do in membership on the first of every single month. Um, and you're so welcome to join. We'll put a link to that below too, right? It's always working in the current energy in an embodied experiential way where we work directly with those energies uh, <laughs> to uh, live close to the bone, right? Live close to the bone. To me, that's just a really fun, beautiful, tangible, earthy, grounded kind of a Virgo and earth priestess way of saying living close to the razor's edge of truth, right? It's like walking that line of truth for ourselves, your truth, your, your true self. Uh, okay, so that invitation will be down below if you're interested. There's like six hours of bonus um, workshops in there. It's And it's all about, it's called Nothing But Soul. I love that journey. Love it. It's so good. Um, by the way, speaking of soul, during this full moon, we've got Eris, goddess of chaos and discord, on the north node, right? That's destiny. That's uh, your <laughs> true north. That's your soul purpose, that's where your soul is headed to in this life. It's pointing toward what you came here to do as a soul. Um, Eris, goddess of truth, demanding of truth. I love this lineup. We'll talk a little bit more about that when I get to the full moon. Uh, let me come back to this Virgo uh, season and a little bit more about Virgo energy. Let's talk a little bit higher octave of Virgo, so I'll stay within Virgo, but if we get up to kind of a little higher of an altitude, we start to tap into Virgo and Earth Priestess. Earth Priestess, very grounded. It's not woo woo la la um, angels with sparkly fairy dust, which I've got nothing, I got no problems with that. I love that. That just ain't Virgo, right? That's just not the Earth Priestess. The Earth Priestess is like, I will embody the light through my whole body and transmit it outside of myself, right? That's a Virgo and Earth Priestess. Like you want to talk about sacred prostitute, that's like Virgo and Earth Priestess. I will sanctify sexuality through the deep depths of my body, right? Like I will bring it in all the way down and I will transmit grace through myself. So that's the gift of Virgo season when we work in those higher octaves. It's really this opening up our capacity. That's what Virgo wants to do. Open our capacity to be a channel for love, channel for light, channel for grace. It's, it's a lot about if you want to think about it in terms of like soul embodiment. That's Virgo. Like I want to embody my, the soul, right? It's, um, I want to bring it in and I want to ground it. I want to make it tangible. I want to make sex sacred. I want to make my job sacred. I want to make my home sacred. I want to make this pen sacred, right? There's nothing that Virgo can't bring the sacred into. It's like making, bringing the sacred into the mundane. A beautiful bridge, like bridging heaven and earth, bridging uh, the sacred and the mundane. That's Virgo earth priestess and that's the energy that we're in. So again, speaking on these spiritual levels, like it is a really beautiful and amazing time to work with embodied spiritual practices. Um, we have this amazing workshop um, it's a very great starting point. Like it's a, it's probably the best starting point rewilding um, workshop that I would suggest, and it's called Body Wisdom Activation. It's very much about bringing. Um, <laughs> let me let me see. It's about. Um, 
how we can embody more and more and more of our spiritual essence. Like what is spiritual embodiment? What is the body wisdom centers waking up, coming online and weaving more and more and more with our spiritual selves so that we're not living these lives like, well, here's my spiritual life, here's my family life. <laughs> like it's much more embodied. It's much more embodied. Um, I don't know if we'll be able to get you a link to this body wisdom activation workshop. I know some of you have it in our community. Um, if you see a link below, that means we somehow figured out how to open the doors for you. It's not open all the time, but uh, who knows? We might, it might just be like a checkout page because I don't think we have like a proper page for it. Uh, we'll see. I don't know what we'll be able to do between now and the time that this video comes out, which is in like two days. So I don't know, bless my team if we get this out. But even if you see a link, we'll get you a link even if it's just to like checkout page of what this is. Um, yeah, so anyways, we'll see how we can do, we, see if we can do that for you. Okay. Um, let me, let's dive into the full moon. Uh, so this full moon, full moons are the culmination of the new moon. If you haven't watched the new moon video that I did, you might want to because that's the whole moon cycle. This is the halfway point, the culmination, the illumination point of it. Um, I'm just, I'm smiling because I, why, why am I smiling? It's interesting. Uh, do I even share this part? It's, it's a complete tangent. It's a complete tangent and I'll share it with you just so I can be totally transparent with you. Uh, I'm feeling into that original video and um, Venus is in retrograde, right? So if Mercury is in retrograde, let's talk about it this way. If Mercury is going into retrograde on the 23rd, right? By the time you get this, by the time this video is public, Mercury will already be retrograde. That's the mind going into the underworld. Venus, we could say, represents the heart. Venus has been in retrograde. The interesting thing about Venus in retrograde, and this is around this full moon, interesting that we're starting with the dark goddess of course like the deep sacred feminine the dark feminine um but venus in her underworld journey she's already coming into dark feminine just innately in her retrograde in going into the underworld right she's starting to illuminate more of the hidden more of the deep sacred feminine right really wake that up in us in our hearts so this isn't going to be the mind mercury is going to be busy the, your mind is going to be busy with virgo stuff right but your heart's busy with leo stuff which is heart and so if we were to do heart-based practices and we were to really like ask our deep heart and start to learn the language of the heart, give our heart some space to speak to us or um, to reveal its desires to us. Um, the heart is in this underworld journey. It's in, a, it's in a revise, revisit, recalibrate, reimagine. Everything to do with the heart. Everything to do with Venus, right? Um, Venus values, heart-based values relationships, love, that's Venus. And so not only has she gone retrograde into the underworld, into the deep sacred feminine, she has visited Lilith, dark goddess, visited Kali, dark goddess. Now during this full moon, she's visiting Hecate, queen of the witches, also dark goddess. Stunning. This, this Venus retrograde is just a really glorious, um, really glorious journey. Uh, okay, so if you haven't seen the video, there's another podcast on, I think it's called Dark Feminine Energy. Yeah, it is. And we go into Hecate, Kali, and Lilith. So if you're like, what are these archetypal energies? What is Venus doing? Like, what is this underworld journey? Is dark bad? No, dark isn't bad. Dark is just hidden. It's also extraordinarily powerful, um, especially when we can become more and more conscious of the deep sacred feminine. Um, so if that kind of theme sings to you, like heart things, Venus retrograde is still singing to you, the feminine is kind of kicking up, um, witchy stuff, uh, like uh, Lilith would be a little bit more like edgy, like pushing the sexual boundaries. If like deeper desires are coming up or you're just like your feminine is kind of pissed off. <laughs> it can show up in many ways, right? The call to the deep sacred feminine shows up for us in many, many different ways. But if that's at all like vibing with you, uh, we'll put a link to that episode. 
uh, up here and maybe we'll put it at the end of this uh, at the end of this video too but you'll find it somewhere look around <laughs> um, okay let's keep going on with full moon so full moon we talked about this is in Pisces Pisces is a very spiritual energy. It's a very sensitive, so heightened sensitivity, heightened empathy, heightened spiritual. Uh, veils get really thin in Pisces full moon. Like how beautiful is this? And it's conjunct Saturn. <laughs> That's interesting. And I want to talk about this too. So we've got all that going on, of course. Full moon in Pisces is a full moon in Pisces and it's a super moon. So it's even more energy, meaning it's closer to the earth. It'll look bigger when we look at it. Um, but in the energy of Pisces, right, it's activating spirituality. It's activating our sensitivities. It's activating creativity is also a big part of Pisces energy. It's water energy. Um, it's very compassionate energy as well. It's stunning. It's, it's, it's high vibing spiritual energy. And then we have Saturn, Father, Time, Lord of Karma. <laughs> I love this lineup. I have a deep respect for Saturn. Saturn is reality check. Saturn is, ready for this, more grounding it, grounding. Right? Saturn wants to ground it in. So similar to how Virgo and Earth Priestess wants to bring it in, Saturn is the one who manifests. He's the one who brings it in. He grounds it. He makes it a physical reality. So this is pointing even more toward the embodiment of spiritual truths, right? Of spiritual gifts of spiritual callings, the embodiment and the expression outward through ourselves of them. So stunning, um, so stunning. Let me feel for, uh, it can be like red flag, not red flags, but there can be tricky stuff with the Saturn conjunct full moon, right? It's just, it's innately, it's like father time, Lord of karma, right? Really earthy grounded with spiritual full moon, you know? So there can be some rub, um, but the rub can, if we can let the rub of it, like mundane, sacred, mundane, sacred, if we can let the rub bring us into something new, bring us into a newer way of them relating, right? Okay, maybe instead of having this old thought pattern, old school, that can also be Saturn, like old school, old ways, and then we can go, okay, Maybe instead of having this old thought pattern of it's either my spirituality or my daily life, which many of us I think still live that way, right? Yeah, we gotta confess, we gotta be honest with ourselves, right? I know there's parts of my life where it's still like, ooh, not sure I want the neighbors to know exactly, you know, what I do for a living. <laughs> they just think I'm a teacher of some sort. Uh, anyways. Uh, but just being honest about it and and what's kind of being asked is, okay, if these old thought patterns where I'm going to keep my spirituality separate from my daily life, maybe there's a new way of thinking about like, oh, actually the sacred is already in everything. Actually, there is not, not, it is not, not divine. All right. <laughs> like, um, my home is not, not a temple space. It's not, not sacred. That tree is sacred. My body is sacred. Um, the land I, I walk upon around me is sacred, right? My relationship to my dog is sacred, right? So really letting the rub bring us into possibly a more evolved way of looking at things, a more enlightened, a more evolved way of looking at things. Okay, uh, let me feel a little bit more for just what's popping loudly in the full moon. Uh, I might just take a quick look. Do, do, do. I can't believe I've essentially covered everything that I have in my notes for us. Whew. That's pretty wild. Here's a piece that I have not talked about yet. It's an interesting one. It has a little bit to do with, um, let's just say, well, let's just, let's weave it from this angle. Chiron is still really active. So Chiron's retrograde, talked about Chiron, I believe in the new moon video. So the one I referred to this whole new moon cycle, Chiron's wounded healer. Um, 
Chiron's gonna be doing a fun, I think he's Quin Kung, Quintile to Mercury on this full moon. There's this way of like, our thoughts can heal or harm. So watching around this full moon for Chironic, Chiron, Chiron's a wounded healer, right? And so it's like Mercury retrograde doing this dance with Chiron is gonna be like, and here's what you missed around your healing. Here's what you missed around your deepest, most sacred wounds, right? And if you're curious about that, go watch the other video because I talk more about Chiron in that video and you can dive a little bit more into it there. But um, Watching around the 30th for healing and really keeping a focus on may this be healing, may this be in the highest good for all, including myself. Chiron can sometimes take us to self-sacrificing. Virgo can sometimes take us to self-sacrificing. So if there's things to watch out for during this astrology end of August, it's watch out for martyrdom, watch out for self-sacrificing, um, really lean into what is in my highest good is in the highest good of the all of everything. That's how we know it's truly in our highest good, right? That's like a spiritual law. That's a mystical law. If we truly get to what's in our highest good, or like truly get to what's in our highest good, it is in the highest good of the all of everything, right? Sometimes Virgo can bring up some of the priestess wounds, some of the priestess wounds of self-sacrifice, of martyrdom, of if it's not hard, it doesn't count, um, of just, terror around our light, terror around opening up to some of our spiritual gifts, opening up to some of our capacities for being a channel for grace or being a channel for light or being a channel for love. So just, and with Chiron kind of in the mix with this Mercury retrograde going on with six planets in retrograde, right? Cause Uranus goes retrograde on the 28th. So that makes six planets in retrograde by the end of August. Jupiter goes retrograde September 4th third or fourth, that's seven planets that will be retrograde. I think this is worth talking a little bit about. Um, seven planets retrograde, that is a whole lot of review, revise, revisit, a whole lot. Like this hand gesturing is a whole lot of inner underworld journeying, a whole lot of bringing it in, right? Like really bringing it in. Um, yeah, uh, not to say that we're not still doing things in the outer world, right? I don't wanna get confused and sometimes people are like, I don't make any decisions during a Mercury retrograde, right? It's, I, that's, that's just like scratching the surface, right? That's like scratching the surface of what this is. There can be many decisions that be made because we're illuminating more. We get to see more, we get to think about things differently. Um, so many decisions can be made, but just, Really, if there's something I can offer around that, is really come from a deep embodied place with them, right? Is this decision I'm making or this creation I'm bringing out in the world or what I'm launching or, you know, this choice in my relationship or choice in home or whatever, has this gone all the way like, through my upper chakras down in my lower chakras? How does this sit in my guts? How does this sit in my guts? How does this sit in my heart? Don't just let something be a surface level uh, pivot, right? If we're gonna make a pivot or we're gonna make, we're gonna start creating things or launching things or you know, making these changes, lean into Virgo. It is all about the embodiment. Get those body wisdom centers online and active because they'll talk to you, right? Your gut, your deep gut truth will speak and there's a lot of wisdom in these lower wisdom centers, a lot of wisdom in the heart wisdom center, which is kind of middle wisdom center. Here's like upper wisdom center is like third eye area, getting that all bright and shiny, getting the heart active. And then that lower wisdom center, that is a powerhouse that many of us um, have not worked with. We haven't kind of tapped into it. We haven't connected to it. We haven't aligned with it. And that is powerful. When we get that online, Holy moly, that's, that's one of the gifts that the alchemists knew, right? Is to get all the wisdom centers online activated and now you've got everything aimed at the right, at the same direction. I mean, that's when you can move mountains. That's when you turn lead to gold. Um, so again, hopefully we'll have that body wisdom activation workshop. I think it's $47, right? It's, it's, it's like peanuts um, for what it will do if it's right for you, right? If it's right for you, of course, everything I offer all the time, whether it be listening to the Dark Feminine Energy podcast, 
coming to Ibiza in November for the Path of the Priestess retreat, or it be this Body Wisdom Activation workshop. It's always, always just, they're just offering. Like, here's just ways to go deeper. Um, and just, you gotta feel for what's true for you, just like I talk about in this podcast, you know, um, giving you this whole plethora of things to feel into and, you know, what serves for you. I'll leave you with this final little um, reflective practice. By the way, if you're interested in Ibiza, I think right now there are 15 spots available. There's only open to 22. It's small, it's intimate. It's our last in-person retreat um, happening this year. I don't have any plan for next year. I, I don't know. I never know when the next in-person. I don't do a whole lot of them anymore. But if that sings to you, that's November in Ibiza and there's details below. Um, okay. Here's the practice that I'll leave you with. It's uh, more of a reflective practice. Um, and you can do this around different areas of your life. So you could do this around your calling. You could do this around your physical health. You could do this around your energetic health. Um, and these four questions. All right, so if I were to feel into, let's just do health, my physical health, because I'm really liking this one at the moment for Virgo season. I'm super crazy excited for this, this season for myself personally, is just this like recalibrating, this uh, coming up to the next level of vibrancy, ne next level of health, next level of aliveness and I don't know, rhythm and harmony. Like there's this harmony that's wanting to happen, this new rhythm wanting to happen and I can feel it. So let's do it around this. So if we're gonna feel into health, and we just kind of hold this intention. Um, if I were to um, really step into my next level of vibrancy, my next level of aliveness, my next level of health, my next highest level of physical health, what would I stop doing? What would I start doing? What would I do more of? And what would I do less of? Those four questions. And we'll put those down below too, so if you're like, ah, I didn't write them down fast enough. Don't worry, they'll be in the show notes below um, or the description of the YouTube video below. Uh, and you can do that again, like if you want to turn the gear and you want to go toward, okay, my, my calling, like my, what am I really called to do? What really lights me up? If, if I were to come into like next greatest level of alignment with what I'm called to do, again, that's Virgo, remember service. Um, my next greatest level of this in a really healthy, true way, right? Healthy, true way, <laughs> um, not wounded, not from a wounded place of service or a wounded priestess or a wounded light worker. This is like high level sacred, right? The, the giving is the receiving, the receiving is the giving, right? Like none of this martyrdom, self-sacrifice stuff. Um, if I were to do that, and then you ask the four questions for that area of life, and you can choose any area of life again, if you don't know where Mercury is retrograding, what house, that could very much point to the area of life that is highlighted right now. I would very strongly recommend everyone go look at their birth chart and just see where is eight degrees of Virgo to 21 degrees of Virgo. Look at the house and look if there are any planets Mercury's going over, right? You can start to look at other things if you're really into astrology. Look at oppositions, look at squares, yada, 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 but skip all that crap. Um, if you're not into astrology, just know the house. That's the area of life. Ask those four questions for that area of life. You will not regret it. It will be so good to be shining light and working with the energy so that Mercury doesn't have to be a trickster. He doesn't have to like pull the rug out from underneath you to get you to see something, right? Like none of that, none of like that, that we can work with this. We can get in the slipstream and just be carried along into right your next greatest expression of self, your next greatest life that you're creating for yourself. All right. I love you all so much. It is such a beautiful creation. Would love to see you in the comments. Um, anything and everything that you feel to share, I'm always in there the first couple of days after a video goes out. If you're called to Ibiza, <laughs> that would be amazing. Uh, maybe you're called to Bones, the membership, maybe that body wisdom activation, maybe the dark feminine. There's lots of different places um, to go. It's like choose your own adventure. Where will you go next? All right. <laughs> um, I will see you when I see you, where I see you, and how I see you. Mwah.